Okay. Uh, morning, everybody. I think it's day six or something um, of, the, of our learning together. Um, and uh, please got everything we do. I'll say it up front. It should be for uh, Hatsala for Daniel Shimon Ben Sharon. Um, I went to see Rob Perez yesterday. His son Daniel is, uh, is still missing. It should come home, be returned home soon. Um, Daniel Shimon Ben Sharon. So all our learning should be for his um, for his speedy and safe return. And I got to see the Gibor, his older brother, also Gibor Yonatan, who um, who was shot in the leg. Um, Baruch Hashem, miracles that, that that he made it out, and he had tremendous, tremendous heroism, which we heard a little bit about. Um, not from him, but uh, from his mafaked that had told uh, our parents about the tremendous things that he did, the people that he saved. Um, he was one of the first people there in in the south. Um, he left home Shabbat morning and and flew there and and uh, was tremendously brave and heroic. Um, so he needs a refuah shleima. Um, he got hit in the leg, and he is. Please God will be dancing with both his legs at his wedding on Tuesday night. So um, mm -hmm. Amishrael is quite something. So, so please God, he should have as much simcha as he can um, and feel completely besimcha at that moment. Um, and then we continue to daven for his refuah Lama and his brother's safe and speedy return. Um, also, as I said this morning, I feel like the title this week is flooded, right? It's Parshat Noach, and it's uh, we're feeling flooded, fairly flooded from the news from. Um, from everything that's going on. Let's just see, someone wanted to join. I guess not. Um, so from uh, from uh, from everything that's going on, from the news, from the things, I feel like we're getting into this moment now in, in Mar Cheshvan. Rav Baruch uh, shared a beautiful idea yesterday. He said, normally we step out of the, the Yamim Naraim and uh, the, the, the month of Tishra, and we're so um, filled and infused with mitzvot. And then Cheshvan is this time where there's no specific mitzvot. And then we take all the inspiration and the wellsprings that we've, uh, that we've gathered up, and then we... Um, and then we we, we take them into Cheshvan, and Cheshvan is sort of this like bland, blank slate that we then apply all the inspiration in the mitzvot to those days afterwards. Uh, this year is uh, unfortunately vastly, vastly different, um, and and in a, in a sense, like Tishrei ended with this vast burst of of activity, um, of of energy in certain negative ways, in uh, in positive ways from Am Yisrael, seeing how we've responded. And now the challenge in Cheshvan is to sustain that, right? And to and to say, how do we how do we take that energy and actually allow it to sustain us in the long run and each day? Um, that's the sense that I woke up with the morning. Is like, wow, there's like a certain sense of uh, it's a terrible word to use, but a novelty, right? In, in in suddenly your world changes and you get this boost of energy to be able to deal with that. But then you have this realization that it's not going to it's going to stay like this for a while. This this abnormal is going to is becoming a sort of new normal. And how do we adjust to keep ourselves uh, strong? Um, and and that's going to be the challenge of of Mar Um I think for right for each and every one of us, it's about like you know what what are the regular things that we can think of to strengthen ourselves that can strengthen ourselves now. I think this time of of, of our day when um, in 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 using the uh, the, the expression I, I shared yesterday from Rav Oshavas. That, that he heard from the Tzant Rebbe, where we take a moment from the day to stop looking at everything outside, um, to cover our eyes and say Shema Israel, to cover our eyes from, from the visceral reality, go back into a deeper, deeper reality with the Kodesh Baruch Hu and, and strengthen that Emunah so that we can step out fresh every every morning with a renewed sense of Emunah and motivation and, uh, um, and, and focus. Deep breath. So, um, so, so th this morning I woke up to, to some very very harsh news um and and i want to not just use use the use this learning to be for a tefillah for for daniel shim ben sharon israel and and Shvuya israel and, and yonatan ben sharon but israel but 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 also um aliyat nishmato shall um amitai tzvi uh, ben tamir ben arav tamir granot um, I don't know him directly, but but um, Rav, Rav Tamir Granot is is quite a well known Rav in the in the modern or religious Zionist community in Israel. Um, he um, I think his yeshiva is I don't know if it's a Rosh I can't remember exactly what it's called. They he's very dedicated to music. Um, yeah, so he teaches tremendous Torah, and uh, and he's very connected to music. His son-in-law 
is how I'm connected. His son-in-law is Eliashiv Groner, who Jackie, your Eyal knows. I think he was in Makor Chaim with Eliashiv. Um, so Eliashiv, I, I had the schut of working with Eliashiv for many months this year, and hopefully we'll continue on a on a Nigunim project that we're doing at Koren. Um, and this is Eliashiv's brother-in-law who was killed in a tank on the northern border yesterday. Um, so this should be an aliyah for his neshama. Um, I've, I looked at a picture of him, I have no doubt he was a, a sweet, tremendous, gorgeous tzaddik, like so many of these people. Um, and uh, coming from a family of song, hopefully our shira ma'alot that we're going to learn now should be a, a, a tremendous tikkun and, and an aliyah and, and a hatzalah for all of Am Yisrael. Um, what was his name again? It's, I'll give you a, mo a moment. Um, Amitai Tzvi. Amitai Tzvi ben Arav Tamir ve Avivit, I think. Yeah. Avivit, yeah. Ar Ar Amitai Tzvi ben Arav Tamir ve Ramanit Avivit. Granot Hashem Yikom Damo. Um, these got should be the last, 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 last one. Mamash, Mamash. Okay. Um, Okay, I'm going to share my screen now. We're going to do Tehillim Kufchaf. What's that in English? Sorry, 120. So, okay, so 120 starts us the section of the Shira HaMa'alot. Um, so there's different sections of the different uh, Tehillim. Um, Kufiyot Tet we know because it's the longest, longest Tehillim. It's the one where for every letter there's like a full a full paragraph. And after that Kufiyot Tet, um, we often say when someone's very sick and we want to say their name, so it's got every letter. So after Kufiyot Tet is Kufchaf, after 119 comes 120. And um, that is the, the beginning of the Shira Malot. There are 15 of them. Uh, we mentioned this in a, in a previous year when we did Kufchaf Aleph, which is very well known to us. That's Shri Lamalot Asana Alari Ma'anya Boizri. So that's the one that comes after this one. That one we said was the Perik Tehillim that, we, that is believed to have been the first one that was said, because that's the one that's Shir Lama Alot, not Shir Hama Alot. Um, this one, 120, even though it's the first one in the order of the Pirkei Tehillim, it's the same as the rest of them in having Shir Hama Alot. To go again over what we said over there, we said that the, there's the power in steps, in stages, in phases. When we first spoke about it, I spoke about it in terms of the phases of, of mourning, where you get hit by the, the sense of grief. Then the grief moves to anger. Then the anger goes to, um, uh, I think it's, I think it's, no, it's denial, um, denial, anger. Um, I can't remember them all exactly now, but they're th those phases, and I feel like now we are in the midst of just bouncing between all of them. Um, and once again, we should give ourselves permission to be in whatever space we are. Um, what I thought about this I thought about this morning, based on what we shared yesterday, is we now on the first day of Cheshvan, and um, we need to be moving up those steps. So to continue on from Rabbi Baruch's idea, it's how do we gird strength every single day and build upon that strength and strength that we should be able to sustain our strength and get stronger, not just get through each day, but somehow a little bit stronger each and every day to, to move ahead. Um, we spoke about the relationship between Rosh Chodesh and the moon and the sun. We know that on Rosh Chodesh, even though it's, we celebrate the beginning of the month, but the reality of the moon is that the moon is in a smaller, smallest form. Um, it's just as it begins to appear in the darkest part that, that we see the beginning of the light. And then the light grows and grows and grows and grows until we get to the climax of the month on the 15th. And on the 15th, we then see that the moon is a, is a pure reflection of the sun. Amisrael, in all its values and light, is a full reflection of uh, the constant light of the sun, which is HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Um, if we look at that in, 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 in the respect of the Chagim, you'll, you'll realize that most of the Chagim all fall out on the 15th of, of, their, of their month. Um, so Pesach is the 15th of Nisan, um, Sukkot is the 15th of Tishrei, right? because that's, that was a Moed. A Moed comes from the Lashon of meeting. That's when we would meet Hashem in the in the, in the Beit Hamikdash. The reason Shavu, sorry, Tu Bishvat. 
Exactly. Tu Bishvat um, is exactly that. Purim is also at Yudalad Tetvav. Purim also falls out on that. Um, tu Ba'av, right, is the Nechama of, of, of Tisha Ba'av. Um, that's also the 15th. So you'll see the 15th. There's always this reflection. And it's when we come to meet a Kodesh Baruch Hu. The only reason Shavuot is not, um, it's on Zion, um, Sivan is because it's a continuation from Pesach. Pesach and Shavuot are one long Chag actually connected through Sefirat Omer. But every time we come to meet, we meet Hashem. It's when the the the, the moon is uh, is meeting the sun. We we that's based in Bereshit. When we when we see the Psukim of it, at Shnei Hamorot Hagdolot, and then it says it talks about the two great luminaries, and then straight afterwards it talks about Hamorah Katan Hamorah Gadol. That there's the small the small light and the big light, and there's the the midrash that uh, Rashi brings that there's there was a there was a dispute between the two lights that said, how can there be, the moon said, what was to be the moon said, how can there be a king with two crowns? And how can there be these two luminaries expressions of Hashem? And Hashem said, okay, I'll make one of you smaller. Um, and that's Amishal that then, that then is in that space of, uh, of being metaken. That's our role in the world is not just to be light, but to bring light, to become light. Um, and I think about, uh, we'll say, we'll say his name again, um, uh, Amitai Tzvi uh, Ben Arab Tamir and Avivit. Uh, there's no doubt, um, not knowing him personally, but knowing a few people around him, no doubt he was a tremendous bringer of light. And, and we need to now, the light that he would create directly in this world uh, has unfortunately been extinguished. Our responsibility is now to continue to spread his light, to grow his light, um, and through our Torah, through our Masim Tovim, and through, and through uh, strengthening him and, and remembering him. V'tokshar Niftzei V'chole Yisrael, that they should be able to bring their light directly very soon. Um, okay, also in, in the, the Haftarah that we didn't read last week, but, but that's connected to Sefer Breshit, if it wasn't Rosh Chodesh, is the, is the expression of Am, Hashem calls us to be an Am Lo'or Goyim. Ani Hashem Karatich and uh, he called us in Tzedek, and he made, a, he made a, a covenant with us that we should be an Am Lo'or Goyim. So our whole role is be the moon that brings light, um, that brings the reflection of, of the of the light of the sun in its fullness. We're in that process all the time, and we wax and we wane, right? So that's also part of our, our strength, is that we're able to move up and move down and move up and move down. And we all certainly feeling that in different aspects, in different degrees of connection to the different things that are happening, how we're moving up and moving down, moving up and moving down. That's natural to us, right? So we, we've got that built, that strength is inbuilt within us um, to be able to, be pushed back and then to and then to come forward. So I thought that matching the Shir Hamalot, the 15 um, songs of, of ascent, to the 15 days of Cheshvan um, could perhaps bring a special tikkun to to Am Yisrael and a special Hatzalah for wherever it's needed. Um, and uh, think that all these special people should be elevated, should be saved, should be uh, redeemed, and Am Yisrael should. Just be bringing light in in an, in natural, normal ways, um, in the world of tech and medicine and all the regular things that we like to talk about in the modern state of Israel, and all these terrible tragedies that, until last week, we believed belonged to history, um, should go back into history and uh, should be remembered, but never be repeated. Tilim uh, kufchaf. Um, so, Song of Ascent um, to Hashem. Once again, we see Hashem's name again. It's always Hashem of Rachamim that we're calling out. So, whenever we see Yudhei Vavhei, it's always like invoking the sense of Rachamim from Hashem. But Saratali, in my time of trouble, we've seen already so much of the Tehillim are motivated by David Amelech's distress. Um, we call out Mima Makim. That's the Shiramat we're going to see later on when we get to. Um, of Lamed, um, 130. Karati v'yaneini. I called to Hashem and He answered me. That should be enough. We should call out to Hashem and we should see His answer um, uh, fully and and completely. Adonai hatzila nafshi misfat sheker milashon remia. Now this is where this Tehillim becomes very interesting and relevant um, for us, where I think in these last few days it's become very apparent that the voice of the world outside and the power of speech to do damage is as strong as it was and especially in, in light of 
especially in light of um, the, the tremendous atrocities that we're seeing now, uh, all it did seem, all it seems to do, was bought a little bit more time than normally before the nations of the world start to use um, the most vicious, vicious tool, which is the tool of misinformation, not even disinformation, but uh, lashon hara. Right? We talk about uh, evil slander. You said something bad about your friend. This is lashon hara v'haroa, um, evil and 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 despicable language that perverts the truth um, and uh, and can cost lives. Um, so, so that's what we. That's that's essentially the theme of this of this uh, tehillim, is the danger that comes to us from language, and perhaps that's like, that's something that's interesting as as the first one of the Shira Hamalot is the 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 relationship of of language, um, and we we know what a we know what an arrow looks like, we know what a bomb looks like, we know what a mortar looks like, unfortunately. Um, but but we we often underestimate the the damage of words. Um, there's this amazing uh, interview going around. What's his name from England? Um, Douglas Murray or something like that. Um, where he's this author in England. Yeah, is that right, Michael? Douglas Murray, yes. Um, tremendous, tremendous. He should he should he should be knighted by by the Jewish people. Um, where he's where where he's asked by the presenter there. Should Israel have a proport? You know, is Israel being proportionate in its in its response? Is it being moral? Um, and he said he, you know, essentially says that the, that word proportionate always comes up in disputes with Israel with nobody else. Um, and essentially he says, you know, God forbid that Israel should be proportionate in its response. Um, and and other similar people saying, you know, what proportionate would be that our soldiers don't want to be proportionate because they, they don't want to do um, commit the atrocities that were committed to us. I'm not even going to mention them. Um, so, so, so that's the, the power of these words. The unfortunate thing is, we we see these words and we we can share them more easily than ever before with social media. The unfortunate thing is, we see someone like that and we go, "Wow, wow, wow!" The truth is getting to the world. I hope it is getting to the world. Um, we live in our own echo chambers, especially in social media. They're all designed to to push back. Um, all the things that we want to see, so that we're going to keep on clicking it and get encounters. I remember, it must have been 15 years ago, there was some attack happening in Israel, and I saw a friend of mine in uh, in South Africa post. Amazing now to see all the positive social media and positive people, you know, now on on, on his feed, um, talking about the good of Israel. So, so you know, I was like so sad, you know, that 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 he was deceived into thinking that that's what other people are seeing as well. That that the fact that Facebook, Instagram, whatever, make this feed look like it's an objective truth that everybody's seeing in order for you to feel subjectively engaged um, is a travesty in and of itself. So that's my kavana, my new kavana for this TLM is the, the, the deceit of media and of words and of things. We should dive in that, that the things that we're seeing on our feeds should be seen on the feeds of those those um, those who, who are saying words to, to other worlds, right? Um, uh, we're not, we're not going to, it doesn't matter how many of these videos get made, we're not going to change the minds of our enemies. So that's like a tefillah shav in a sense. But but there is a whole world of people uh, in England, in America, in Australia, in the, call the free world in inverted commas, that, uh, that they need to see these things, people that are rational enough to open themselves up to the truth. There's been a break in the darkness in this, in this atrocity more than ever, and um, and 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 that needs to be leveraged and exploited to spread to spread more light to people who are um, rational and and grounded enough to see that light, um, right? Ma'itin lechal ma yosif lechal l'shon remiyah that this language of of addition. So Hashem deliver my soul from lying lips. Right? We know the pain when you see people people perverting the truth through language. Language doesn't have to be backed up with 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 evidence. Right? Someone can say something, and you can listen to what they're saying, and it can be very convincing, because our minds create the images behind the language that they're sharing, um, and that's why they can be even more even more damaging. Because we don't see what the arrow looks like, we don't see what the mortar looks like, we don't see what the what the missile looks like. What shall be given to you? What more shall be done to you? You deceitful tongue. Uh, sharp arrows of the mighty with coals of broom. So David Amelech makes the clear connection between the arrows of uh, of, of the tongue. One, they are the, the arrows are, are like the thinnest, right? They're like the, you can't see them from far. 
um, they're also the most damaging because they're so thin, they go so deep, and they can be so penetrating. So to the same thing with 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 damaging words, they have this power of um, reaching far and penetrating and being very personalized. I think that's because words words only enter a person through their own interpretation. A vision is a vision. A a a, a, um, a, a picture is a picture. And a picture speaks for itself in a sense. What happens with words is that, is that we have to process words and we create our own image on, on our own side so they become even more damaging. They become sort of tailored to, to that own person's interpretation and, and damage. Um, it was to me that I sojourn with Meshech, that I dwell beside the tents of Kedar. Um, um, and, and I think they, 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 they speak terribly about... Uh, um, about about the Jewish people. Right, so here, Amart Amart Kesed Yisrael ki kvar likiti begaliyot rabim aragati meshech im neyefet v'malchut paras v'yavanu meshech. So there's some connection here to the to, to these specific nations that have um, that have caused so much uh, so much trouble to us. We've been through so many different galuyot, so many different exiles. Every exile comes with its own propaganda, whether it's you know, Nazi propaganda, you know, 80 years ago, um, to, uh, you know, to whatever, whatever people said about us um, in, in mosques, in, uh, in churches, uh, all over the years, blood libels, the, the, the danger of those words um, comes back to affect us. I'll say it now, maybe because I need to get my own sense of self-commitment, but there's someone I went to school with, um, and he he writes terrible things about what Israel is doing to the Palestinians, um, of course. And you know, based on my discussion with Phyllis the other day, there's nothing. The, 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 we we're not 100 percent clean and pure and upright in everything that that, that we've done as a, as a country. Um, and we'd be silly to claim such an absolute thing. Um, but we certainly stand on the side of of goodness, and 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 our enemies stand on the side of evil. Um, but there's this this guy who 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 writes. I stopped following him on on Facebook just a few weeks ago. Um, but he talked about how you know me and all my friends and everybody I went to school with, we were completely indoctrinated by our Jewish education um, to not be able to see any you know any evil or or to know that that we were bringing this all upon us because of how we've behaved as a state to the Palestinians. Um, and then he actually wrote to me directly to say another one of our mutual friends. Um, he, he wanted to send him a whole note after they'd had this massive raging debate on Facebook and then he defriended him. So he asked me, can I send this message to him? It's the first time he's reached out to me ever and uh, I haven't responded yet and, and it's just been haunting me for days, for days, for days. How do I tell him in a way that perhaps, perhaps he can listen, but to say to him, you don't understand you as a, as a you know, and I'm going to be very stereotypical here because that's the point, as a Jewish white male talking um, about the trustees of, you know, the, the alleged uh, non-true, untrue trustees of Israel to the Palestinians, you don't realize the damage that you're doing, the people that you're empowering, because they point to you and they say, look, you, you know, he is a Jewish white male who went to a Jewish day school, and he's saying these things. So obviously it's true what, what um, you know, what Hamas and, and, uh, and Palestinians say about, about Israel. Um, as, as strong as as when we see the uh, you know the, the, the Palestinians on the other side, Arabs living in Israel talking about how amazing Israel is. Um, there's another video going around about a Saudi Arabian saying you know like Israel, why aren't you doing more to you know to obliterate these these evil people? We as the Arabs don't identify with them. So I don't want to get stuck in political historical debates. I'm just saying the, in, he he hasn't realised on his platform that his words can cause uh, loss of life. And empowering of other people, um, and 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 that's why David and Menachem are saying, you know, what sticks and stones uh, can break my bones, words can never harm me. Nothing can be further from the truth. Um, each stick and stone has got one uh, has got one target, and then it does its job and it falls away. Words are lasting and um, and tremendously tremendously damaging. Um, for too long my soul has had her dwelling with with him that hates peace, right? And and we 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 connect ourselves with people who we believe are going to be helping us. We try to support them. Ultimately, um, we realize that they are actually that 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 they don't they sonation on the hate peace. 
right? That's not their calling card. It's the exact opposite. But we delude ourselves into thinking that from a human level, we can talk to their human level, we can talk peace, and we can talk long-lasting peace, and then they, they return to us um, by using that aspect and, and returning to us with, with, with hate and tenfold. Ani shalom, I am all peace, but when I speak, they are for war. Ani shalom, I am all peace. Sometimes you don't need to add any commentary to what David Amelech is saying over here. We speak peace, they speak war. That's a different language. And hopefully Sahal should have Siata Dishma to understand how to have that conversation with them in their language um, to the point that we can continue to speak our language of Shalom, um, which is a sophisticated, beautiful, long-lasting, worldly language of Shalom. Uh, our vision is that everybody's with us in the Beit Amigdash and we there leading everybody towards goodness, truth, light, and it should be a house of tefillah in connection with Hashem for all of the nations. That, that's that's what we want. That's what we're dying for. That's what we're dying for. Again, um, we'll say the tehillim now, we'll say the tefillot, and we should do it for a um, speedy and safe Hatzalah of Daniel Shimon ben Sharon of his Rufa uh, Shlema and Simcha Shlema of his brothers getting married, Yonatan ben Sharon and um, and an Aliyah from the Shema of um, Amitai Tzvi ben Harav Tamir bar Rabbanit Avivit Granot Hashem Yikom Damo Okay, let's say the Tilim together um, thanks again for coming and giving me Chizuk and everybody else Chizuk um, who's on the call. Thank you. Okay, Shira Malot. El Adonai Betzaratali, Karati, Biyaneini. Adonai, Atzila Nafshi Misvat Shekel, Milashon, Remia. Adonai, Hashem Shalom Nafshi Misvat Shekel, Milashon, Remia. Ma'iten lecha, ma Yosef lach, Lashon, Remia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 Rabat Shachna la Nafshi Im Sone Shalom Rabat Shachna la Nafshi Im Sone Shalom Ani Shalom Vichia Daber Hema Lemilchama Ani Shalom Vichia Daber Hema Lemilchama um, okay. Okay, Marco, you want to read the Tvila for us? Okay. Mishibarach Avotenu Avraham Yitzchak v'Yakov v'Yovarech et Chaylei Tzva Agana Yisrael v'Anchei Kochot Abitachon ha'omdim ha'mishmar arzenu v'arei Eloheinu mi'gvul al-Avonon al-Bibad Mitzrayim u'min ha'yam ha'gadol ad-Lavo ha'arava u'v'chol makom shehem v'yabashar v'yavir u'v'yam יתן אדוני את אויבינו הקמים עלינו נגפים לפניהם, הקדוש ברוך הוא ישמור ויציל את חיילינו מכל צורה וסוכר מכל נגע ומחלה. וישלח ברכה והצלחה בכל מעשה ידיהם, ידבר שונאינו תחתיהם ותראהם בחטאת לישוע ובתרד ניצחון, ויקוים בהם הכתוב, כי אדוני אלוהיכם ההולך איתכם להילחם לכם, אם אויביכם להושיע אתכם ונאמר אמן. אמן. מי שברך אבותינו אברהם יצחק יעקב יוסף משה מתפלל ולומדים בעבורם. הקדוש ברוך הוא ימלא רחמים עליהם ויוציאם בכל שבט צמא ואת מוסרותיהם מן הצג ומצוקותיהם יושיעם ושיביהם מהרה לחיק משפחותיהם. יודו לאדוני חסדו ונבלותיו לבני אדם ויקוים בהם מגרש שכתוב 
ופתויי אדוני ישובון, ובאו ציון ברינה, ושמחת עולם על ראשם, ששון ושמחה ישיגו ונסו ביגון והנחה, ונאמר אמן. אחינו, let's read it all together. אחינו כל בית ישראל, הנתונים בצרה ובשביה, עומדים בין בים ובין ביבתה. המקום ירחם עליהם, ויוצא מצרה לרווחה, ומאפלה ליאורה, ומשיבות לגאולה, משתב עגלה ודבר קרים, אמן. אוקיי, everybody, you got your boost, you got your strength. Anybody welcome to stay and, and chat and connect a bit. That's also our purpose over here. I'm going to stop the stream, but, but wishing us all lots of uh, strength to continue to do all that we're doing in our homes, to look after our families, we need to look after ourselves, very importantly, um, and to all that we do, even if it's just working on how to breathe through the next moment, should be a schut for everybody who needs a refuah uh, shleima, hatsala, mahira, ushleima, and... Um, שמירה מוחלטת ושלמה על חיילי צהלינו הקדושים. אמן, תודה. אמן. אמן, תודה רבה.